Hey everyone, I'm going to do a quick install guide on PFSense and this is going to assume a couple things. It's going to assume that you already have your PFSense boot disk already made. Um, that's super easy to do. All you have to do is go to the PFSense website, download the latest image, and then use Rufus to write that image to a USB flash drive. So once you do that, go ahead and plug that into your motherboard, boot everything up. Um, the other assumption is that you've already chosen your hardware, we've already got everything installed, the RAM, CPU, CPU cooler, and yes, that's I think that's about it. So I'm in the BIOS here of my motherboard and I just want to make sure that I have both the uh, onboard LAN enabled. This is not the same motherboard that I used in my last PFSense video, this is a Asus H110T Mini ITX, um, not a whole lot different, but you know I can go over that another time. But um, this is just a little bit easier for me to do. So anyway, in the BIOS, and we're going to go to Advanced, and here's what the normal Advanced screen looks like. You want to go down to where your onboard LAN is. In this case, it's on the onboard devices. And you want to make sure both are enabled. So this one has one Intel and one Realtek. It also has onboard Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and HD audio. In this case, I'm going to disable all these because we're not going to be using them for PFSense. And then I have this one running outside of the case. I'm going to check my CPU temp and make sure everything's fine check the boot order and so we're going to put our flash drive in boot option one and that's our SanDisk cruiser right here and uh, yep yeah, and that's pretty much it and so we're going to exit and save reset so forgive me uh, the black screen, unfortunately, we'll see how we'll see what happens because the capture card's a little funky with uh, actually it seems to be working okay. So it's just booting normally here. All right, so accept their agreement. We're going to install, hit enter again, continue with default, hit enter again. We're going to do guided disk setup. We're going to do entire disk. And that's just the single, in this case, it's an M.2. Uh, M.2, I guess that's NVMe. It's a really tiny NVMe. It's like 30 gig. Um, on the other board, it's a M SATA. So we're going to use the entire one for that. We're going to use GPT. Again, hit enter. It's just going to show you the partition map um, before you do anything else. And we're going to hit finish again. And we're going to commit changes. The other thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you don't have any thing plugged in to your NIC ports. Um, and I'll show you why. But just don't have anything plugged in. Just have your keyboard, monitor, and USB. In this case, I don't want to make any additional modifications, so we're going to hit no. Go ahead and reboot. So now, it might try to boot again from this USB because I've forced, forced it to boot from the USB, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, it's trying to boot from the USB, so I'm going to just turn it off and back on again.
Actually, I think it's booting from the onboard. We'll see. Okay, so it actually looks like it booted from the onboard, which is good. So we're not going to set up any VLANs right now. I'm just going to do a basic WAN and LAN setup. Go ahead, no. It says enter the WAN interface or A for auto detect. In this case, I don't have a proper way to set up a WAN, um, but I do have an Ethernet cable coming off of my current router. So I'm going to plug that in and it'll tell you what interface you're plugging it into because otherwise you don't really have a way of knowing unless you go through the manual and look. At, um, so that's kind of a pain in the ass, but you just plug an Ethernet cable in. It should say once it, okay, EM0 link state changed up. In that case, um, I'm going to use the Intel one for WAN and going to use the Realtek for LAN. So we're just going to type EM0 LAN interface. We're going to do RE0. And we would like to proceed. Might take a second to do this. All right, so I don't know why the DNS resolver took so long, but it just did. So 
that's pretty much it. Um, you just plug in your WAN into your source, whether it's the uh, modem or if you have, for example, Ethernet coming off your ONT, if you have fiber, and then you plug in a switch, hopefully you have a switch, into your LAN and then you're good to go. Obviously there's going to be a lot more setup to do on the PFSense side of things, so I'll do a little bit of an overview on that in a later video, but this is enough to install and get it running. So, what else was going to say? I think that about covers getting it installed and whatnot. Um, oh, just to access the web interface, once you plug everything in, just go to, in this case, we have it set as 192.168.1.1. Just log into that like you would any other router. And then the default login is admin pfsense, all lowercase. And then you can go in there, mess around with all kinds of settings and stuff. But this should be enough to get you started. I'm sorry this video is maybe a little bit less uh, organized than my already disorganized style, but um, this should help you move along with your pfsense setup. And if you have any questions, Give me a shout, come hang out with us in the Discord and on the forums, and I'll see you guys next time.